Hi there. This time the teaching activity goes along with the story Snowflake Bentley. So hopefully you've been able to enjoy the book Snowflake Bentley and this time around we're going to be presenting an idea of how to annotate the text. In other words, how to read deeply, think more deeply about the text using a set of codes and symbols that students can go ahead and use to help them be able to think more clearly and deeply about this nonfiction text. Again, how you may choose to use this video is up to you. You may choose to watch it yourself and get the ideas in your mind and then present it to your child or your classroom or you may choose to go ahead and present this video as it is to your children or your classroom and allow them to get the information in that way as well. So really the choice is up to you how you choose to use this video, but I hope that you enjoyed this video about how to annotate a text using the model text Snowflake Bentley. Hi there. Today we're going to practice annotating a text. And the text we're going to be using is Snowflake Bentley by Jacqueline Briggs Martin. Now, annotation sounds complex, but the idea is really quite simple. And in fact, you have here in the description of this video, you will find a PDF that you can download that has the different codes for how to annotate nonfiction. Now this book about Snowflake Bentley is nonfiction because it is about Snowflake Bentley's life and facts about his life. When we go to annotate, annotation is simply thinking more deeply about a text. And when you annotate a text, it really helps you to dive in and think more deeply about what you are reading which is a very important thing to do. As we annotate, we are going to be using a set of symbols to represent some ideas as we read. Now, you are going to be writing these symbols on sticky notes. Okay, so in the book that I have here, I have put sticky notes because we do not, we never want to write in a book directly unless it is well perhaps when you get older and in high school you will sometimes annotate directly on a book in the margins but that's usually uh, only if you have purchased that book and it belongs to you this book this is a picture book I do not want to write in this so I am going to be using sticky notes instead I'm going to put them directly on the pages if you have watched the video and you're going along with the video and want to annotate the uh, words of the story along with the video, then I highly encourage you to write down the codes on pieces of paper or sticky notes. Let's go through some of these annotation codes for nonfiction. The first is a question mark. That represents any questions that you have as you are reading. So these are asking like, I wonder statements. So anything that leaves you wondering or asking more questions that you want to look up later about what you've just read. Exclamation mark is for anything that's surprising. If anything surpri surprises you about the text, you're going to mark it with an exclamation mark. This asterisk or the little star is for any important facts. Quotation marks for an important or significant quotation. Sometimes an author will add a quotation to a text to make a particular point. This little infinity sign is for any kind of connection you can make with the text. So remember, connections, we can connect with something that's happened to yourself, something that's happened in a different story, or something that's happened in history or in the news. The smiley face is for a funny or humorous part of the text. The letters NS are, represent numbers or statistics. So just a lot of times in nonfiction, you will find numbers and statistics being written in the text as well to kind of get a, give us a feeling of how big or how small something is. 
So we need to pay attention to that as well. For new vocabulary words or words you might not know the definition of, I'm going to simply write them in and circle them. Because again, we're not going to be writing in the book. We're going to be writing on sticky notes. Important things to remember as well is as we're annotating, we also need to question why the author chose to include that information. Okay, so it's very important to kind of question why put that in the text at all? What is the author trying, what meaning is the author trying to convey? Is the author trying to help your understanding of that topic? Did the information help hold your interest? Because oftentimes authors will start a text with some of the statement to kind of grab your interest, but then they also need to hold on to your interest. Did they add that information to hold your interest? Or how is it adding to your learning about the subject? So these are things and very important things for us to keep in mind. As you annotate, you're also going to be looking at this list that you can download below. Let's take a look at back, back at our story here. So on this page, I'm going to be reading and I've got my sticky notes over here so that I can write down my codes as I go. So as I read, he learned that each snowflake begins as a speck, much too tiny to be seen. Well, I can connect that with something that I already know about snow formation. I've already done a little bit of reading about snow formation, so I'm going to make that little connection here because I can connect with some information that I already know. So I could say, um, write down what it is that I know about how snowflakes form. And I have read before that snowflakes start with a speck of dust. Right, so a tiny, teeny tiny speck of dust is how they begin. All right, so wrote that down uh, to kind of help me discuss that connection that I made with what I've already learned. Little bits, molecules of water attached to the speck to form its branches. Okay, molecules, that is a good word. That I might need to look up later. So I'm going to write that down. Because again, I am not going to write in the book, but I'm going to make note of that by writing down the word and circling it, indicating that that is a good vocabulary word, and I will go back after I'm done and look up the definition. Okay. As, so I'm going to continue reading and see what else I can find. As the crystal grows, the branches come together and trap small quantities of air. Well, I think that is surprising. So I am going to put an exclamation mark right there because the branches are coming together and trapping small quantities of air. Many things affect the way these crystal branches grow. A little more cold, a bit less wind, or a bit more moisture will mean different shaped branches. Willie said that was why in all his pictures he never found two snowflakes alike. Well, I'm thinking about that last sentence here. Willie said that was why in all of his pictures he never found two snowflakes alike. So I have a question, and I'm going to mark that with a question mark, because I want to know, is it true that there are no two snowflakes that are alike? I mean, I've heard that, and this says that he never found two snowflakes are alike, but I wonder if it is possible. So... I could write, could there be two snowflakes that are alike? That is something that I am wondering. So I mark it with a question mark and I'm going to write down my question. I can go back 
okay, and uh, research that later on another, in another book, or perhaps with an internet search, I can kind of look up to see if there's ever been an example of two snowflakes that have been found to be exactly the same. Something to research later. If I keep reading here to this page, when he found only jumbled, broken crystals, he brushed the tray clean with a turkey feather and held it out again. Well, I have another question here. Why a turkey feather? Seems kind of strange. And that's something else I could do more research into later, perhaps, if I really wanted to know the answer to that. He waited for hours for just the right crystal and didn't notice the cold. If the shed were warm, the snow would melt. If he breathed on the black tray, the snow would melt. If he twitched a muscle as he held the snow crystal on the long wooden pick, the snowflake would break. Oh my. Okay, so this is kind of surprising. If the shed were warm, it's going to melt. If he breathed on the black tray, it would melt. If he twitched a muscle, he could break the snowflake. I'm going to mark all three of those statements here with exclamation marks because I think that's rather surprising. He had to work fast or the snowflake would evaporate before he could slide it into place and take its picture. That's, again, rather surprising here. And I think this is also an, an important idea, so I'm going to use my little asterisk or my star shape here to kind of indicate that that's an important idea. He had to work fast. I think that is an important idea in this section here. Some winters he was able to make only a few dozen good pictures. Oh, a few dozen. That's an example of a number. So I'm going to code that with NS for numbers and statistics. Some winters he made hundreds. Okay, well, that's another example of a number and a statistic. So I'm going to code that with an NS. All right, well, now I need to go back and I need to think about some of these questions here. And I want to look back, especially to this page. Why do you, so I'm thinking to myself, why did she include this information here? If the shed were warm, the snow would melt. If he breathed on the black tray, the snow would melt. If he twitched a muscle as he held the snow crystal on the long wooden pick, the snowflake would break. He had to work fast or the snowflake would evaporate. Okay, why include all of this information? I, for me, I'm thinking that she chose to include this information because it's indicating just how tricky it was to take these pictures. And if we read, then as we read on, some winters he was able to only, to make only a few dozen good pictures. Why include that particular number, that statistic? Only a few dozen? Well, if you're thinking about in the length of an entire winter with a lot of snow where he lived, then that's not very many pictures. So I think she must have included this number to indicate the fact that it was very tricky to take these pictures and he must not have been successful very often. So I think that she was trying to emphasize the fact that it was a very tricky process and he oftentimes was not successful in taking those pictures. All right, it is now your turn to get a piece of paper or some sticky notes, and then using your code here, go ahead and see what you can find in the book Snowflake Bentley. Go ahead and annotate that text and see what you can find in it. And don't forget that after you've written down your code to really think deeply about why did the author choose to include that specific information.